Hello my fellow gnomes, welcome back to Teddy and today we're going to take a look at the construction of chapter 3, so let's get things rolling. So, into the base plate and we're going to start quick. Monsieur Gnome God, have you forgotten about the design? The artistic vision is the most important of any creation. Okay, thank you vague European artist gnome, let's back up a minute. So, as always, before I even got into studio, I started out with a rough design on paper. So you can check out my desk setup here with my trusty pencil and paper working away. And you can see I've also got several references to look at, such as my drawings of the previous chapters, along with some floor plans I found online of various shops. And there we go, perfection. So this was my initial sketch with these four aisles in the centre and then various rooms around the outside. Excelente! Now the main problem with trying to use some of the floor plans I found online is that they're usually designed to fit in the most products in the store, rather than being designed to be chased down by a rampaging teddy bear. Funny that, isn't it? So I wasn't quite sure how to make it look like a store, but also keeping it interesting for gameplay and not just being a series of boring rows. So I was probably going to need a few modifications to this. But rather than work on refining it, I decided we'd throw it to the back of my mind and just jump into the creation anyway. Design stage complete. So, moving on to the construction, and the first thing I did was try to gain a sense of scale for how big I wanted the next map to be. You can see I've got the first two chapters here, and while chapter one may look pretty big, it's actually quite a bit smaller due to all the empty space around the outside with the trees and general scenery and stuff. The idea was to make chapter three roughly in between the two in terms of size, so I got a base plate into the approximate shape and from here I began to start building. It could be a bit overwhelming launching into doing a full map from absolute zero, but you have to start somewhere, and I started with this window shape to make up the glass frontage of the store. I was roughly basing the design off an image from a Toys R Us store, which I thought looked pretty cool, and I tried to use them as a general guide throughout the build. RIP Toys R Us. Gone, but not forgotten. Throw an F in the chat. <laughs> Either that or I'm just talking to myself about toy stores here. Moving on, I then began laying out the parking area for our hungry toy consumers. I found this car mesh I could use, so I scaled it up to begin building around it, and marking out a few parking spaces and such, along with a pavement along the perimeter, a little walkway and a crossing, and got a decent parking area together. Once this was all done, I thought the entrance really started to take shape, and even though we barely started the build at this point, I was pretty happy with the general direction. Next, I turned to the interior, and you can see I have these long beams going across into empty space. These kind of outlet stores are usually in pretty big or warehouse-like buildings, so I thought it would be interesting to give the store a high ceiling and adding some details like beams helped to make it all look a bit less empty. I then began laying out where I wanted everything to go, so I placed down some quick blocks to mark out the checkout area and aisles, and then started building out a few rooms, starting with the office and then the toilet block over on the opposite side. At this point it does look pretty awkward, but you can see the basic idea does start to take shape. Next up, I wanted to see what to do with the lighting, so I added a fire escape sign and some side sensors to give this murky glow of both red and green. Spooky! I then replaced the boring free model checkouts with a fresh model of my own. I had this idea about maybe using the inside of the checkouts as a lot room, so I made it into this double checkout station thing with tills on both sides and you'll notice at this point the checkouts are actually in the middle of the doors and it does all look a little bit awkward. I tried to play about with some different arrangements here using different trolleys and barriers and stuff but it still didn't look quite right. So you'll see later on I shifted the whole thing over to the left and resized the buildings to make things fit a bit better. And this also meant I could place the statue in the middle to help provide a central point and it gives the map a touch of symmetry as well, which is nice. Here you can see me creating a basic toy display. I know it looks a little lacklustre just having plain boxes everywhere, but I tried to make it look as colourful and enticing as possible with these sort of diamonds and such. Ideally the shelves would have loads of custom toys and shapes, but that kind of thing could easily become a drag on performance, and these maps already have enough detail as it is. So we're probably several hours into the build now and you can see I've changed the layout to what we see in the game today. I also laid down this walkway which helps make the floor look a bit less bland and also helps guide players around the map. 
I didn't want the toy shelves to look all the same, even if they are different colours, woohoo! So I added these little circular displays with a few different toys to help break things up. Of course, I don't think it will be surprising anyone to see I've got toy gnomes for sale here. At this point, I should probably give a few deserved shout outs. You'll notice I started using the new Teddy model for the map here, and that's in the game now as well. And that was created by a really skilled guy by the name of Infinite Harris. He makes some amazing renders and he even made the thumbnail for Teddy as well. I don't know if he takes commissions or anything, but you should definitely check out his work. As somebody else in our Discord uh, also made us this really cool toy box, which I put the Teddies inside. So massive thanks to Flares YT for bringing that one. I think it really helped bring that Teddy toy to life. Moving on with the construction, and I began adding a bit more layout to the rest of the store and ensuring there was actually enough room for the players to walk down. I was probably about halfway done and it's really starting to come together, although I was a little unsure of what to do with this area at the back. I just kind of left it as this dark void and instead turned my attention over to finishing off the manager's office at the front. Thankfully, this was made a bit easier as I could reuse assets from the previous chapter to speed things up. And I also added a little side window so you could see out into the store from there. But of course, with some blinds for added extra privacy. It was then time to make a few more tweaks to the lighting. I generally find using a smaller brightness and range combined with an off-white, slightly yellowish or beige hue that you see here really helps boost the atmosphere. So I did a similar thing with the main lighting for the shop floor and you can really see how it transforms from just being a pleasant afternoon shopping trip to a rather dark, haunted location befitting of our evil teddy bear. Next up, I moved on to the thrilling task of fitting out the toilets. This isn't particularly exciting, but somebody has to do it, right? I used a tile texture for the walls and then reused the assets from chapter one to finish the stalls. I suppose the only new feature here is the urinals I made, which I did rather awkwardly use the mother's character to help scale. Sorry, <laughs> it does create a rather cursed image. I'm sorry you had to find out like this, little baby. I didn't want the players to be in the main store part of the map all the time, so I did add these hallways on either side that act as sort of storeroom as well, with all the boxes and shelving along the sides, and there's a vent that connects them with the, the toilet on the, the left hand side of the map. I also added a loading area onto the back of this one, and I wanted to add a truck in, and while I could have gone to the effort of creating a whole custom vehicle, it wasn't really worth it for something the players would probably spend in 10 seconds at most. So I just threw in this quick mesh I found. Moving back into the store now and I added in one of the few actual toys that's available to buy here. Infinite Harris made this one too, it's a B model and I'd be remiss not to include it. I added these hexagons on the wall to uh, fit the theme. I'm sure you'll recognize I'm taking inspiration here from Bee Swarm Simulator. And with all the bees flying from the ceiling, I think this came out pretty cool. By this point, I'd actually filled in the void at the back of the store with a large room, though it was still empty at this point. So I still needed to fill it. The idea was to create a kind of factory area where teddy bears were getting made and churned out to be then sold on the store. So I made this conveyor belt which would connect the two rooms and then have a machine that would drop the teddy bears onto it once it was activated. This kind of worked okay, but on multiplayer with a lot of people in the game, uh, they did bring up some problems. The conveyor belt didn't really work that well for actual multiplayer gameplay as the teddy player couldn't chase people down it and the items did have a habit of getting stuck along it. Not to mention obviously the lag it could cause when constantly generating miniature rigged bears every few seconds so it wasn't really ideal uh, and if you play the game now you'll see I took I took this out and changed it for a more simplified system with just having the machine on its own. Finally there was one last thing I wanted to add onto the map and that was an ally. A lot of people requested having a character that could actually attack the teddy bear back uh, like you see in Piggy I think it's with a character called Zizzy if I'm getting that right. Uh, so I decided to have a battery operated robot to do the job for us. I actually created the model by getting a bunch of various different Roblox packages and then combining the limbs together to make a single robot. A lean, mean, fighting, robotic machine. Boom! 
there we go. The culmination of about 27 odd hours of recorded footage and probably even more when I factor in all the adjustments I made after a recording. Now, if you haven't already played the new chapter, then I don't know what are you messing about at. Go do it now. There's also the new nightmare mode available for you to play, so there should be plenty of content to keep you satiated for a while. So, thank you very much for watching and I've been instructed to remind you all that if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and why not consider subscribing while you're at it. Goodbye!